Hello, in this talk I is a, a sequel to my talk on question time in the BNP. Uh, what I had to do was to take out the fire and brimstone out of the debate and to try and get to the real problems uh, that people see in their lives um, and to see if immigration is a problem in itself or if it is a benefit to this country. Um, well, I am... Uh, I'm a very patriotic person. I'm a very uh, strongly believe in England. Um, I'm from an Anglo-Celtic uh, family, so I've got people from all over the British Isles in my in my family, um, as well as being English myself. Um, I I believe that England would be better as a social democratic country, similar to Scandinavia. Uh, and that means, in terms of immigration, I'd like to see about 10% of the population um, from outside of this country. Um, and uh, that we have quite an open and liberal um, e immigration policy, but that it's for people to stay, work, and to study here, and then to use that experience to go back to their home countries um, if people want to stay that would have to be within a quota system um, a point system like Australia's got um, I think that is the most democratic way to put it uh, you, you can't have a completely closed door system like the BNP one or a completely open door system like the uh, socialist worker uh, paper wants. Um, you know, you can't simply take a contrary view to somebody because you're from their, their different ideological block. You know, and so I'm trying. I'm trying to go for the middle ground here. Um, you know, we have to have a situation where people can relate to each other with some sort of mutual respect and I believe real nationalism is about the getting the best welfare and the best prosperity for your people um, for your, for your, the best expo expo expanding of your culture that people have cultural understanding um, for instance if you go to European Union countries um, I've been to Germany many times. Um, they will have a, in each little part, in each town, they'll have a museum about that town. They'll have certain uh, culinary dishes, like especially in Italy, um, the division between the north and the south in, in cuisine is great. Um, you can say that perhaps about England as well. I mean, we we don't we when we have uh, down in this in South London you're more likely to have um, pie and mash or a, or a curry or something than uh, people up north who like curry on their chips um, <laughs> so there's all differences within the, within the nation itself um, and you know we can all have a bit of a laugh about that uh, and I think people have to have a sense of humour as well because otherwise I think it's a sign of insecurity um, you know there are going to, there are people who um, you know it, you know I used to wear glasses I I didn't get offended when people called me four eyes or something it's just a joke right um, some people have red hair there's a spectrum of difference within the nation and the, it's it only becomes really offensive when people start to say that your culture is inferior. Um, but of course some cultures do, don't do stand the test of time. Um, often those are the cultures that do think they are superior. Take Nazi Germany. That was a cultural blip in the German experience. Um, or the Soviet Union. They, they thought they were superior to other countries. It didn't last. Because, because they think they're superior, um, they don't perhaps try as hard. And I think, years ago, the English really didn't care what other people in the world thought about them. Um, 
you know, we've got that kind of melancholy thing. You know, we pushed uh, uh, an Irish comedian said we push back the age limit of, um, you know, the the life pushed the life expectancy forward. And the first thing was in our papers was uh, pensions time bomb. Um, <laughs> that's sort of what we are like. We can't really help it. We, we, it's maybe it's something to do with the weather. I don't know. Um, but we've got this kind of melancholy about us, uh, whereas the Irish seem to be the ones who are thought of as more, much more creative, um, and bursting with ideas. And they're all sort of, you know, um, I'm not going to be one of those English people who does an impression of an Irish person. Um, but England is full of ideas. We've given a lot, perhaps more to the world than many other countries. Um, and that doesn't make us superior, it just makes us that we're bloody minded and hard working. Um, and we really have to think and survive. And we have to work together. And that's what I'm trying to get across here. That's the, that's the kind of real nationalism that I'm talking about. And I don't think we, we should feel, um, you know, inferior to the Germans, the French or the Scandinavians, that's why I think we can make Europe work, because we could be, the st we are, we are a, um, a Germano-Celtic country, and so is Germany, you know, um, we can be right at the middle of Europe, okay, um, and that, that's where I think our future lies, uh, when, the, when the, the Royal Navy used to be a force, that you put terror into the hearts of pirates and things like that. And now we've got the Somali pirates. What are they what are they really worried about? Are they worried about the Russians? Not really. They're worried about the Americans because the Americans can put together a large force. Well, the EU could put together a large force. We could go down there and, you know, sort that situation out. That could be a unifying thing. Um... But as regards to the immigration policy, I think that's only going to be solved on a European basis. We have to sort of say for the whole European continent, 10% in each country or 10% overall of the population can be from outside of the European Union. Um, because after all, it's, democrat it's only democratic to say that the taxpayers in that union have a right and, and the voters in that union have a right to say that Look, we are prepared to pay for our resources, our um, children's, the resources we pay in tax are for our children uh, to be educated and to be sent up the chain of education so that they can have a good and prosperous life and have children of their own. And there seems to be this taboo about saying something as basic as that you know you have a right to refuge of course you do and we we want to help you have a right to refuge but we also have a right to survive as a european peoples you know um and i think that really does have to have to be said and that if it was said there would be much less tension on the streets right and people like the bmp wouldn't be trying to make be able to get any headway in what they're trying to do is to make this country like Northern Ireland so that we have a civil war in this country. I think mean, that's what they really want to do. And they want to re-establish the empire and then the empire will fail again just like it did before and we'll have even more immigration here. And it won't be like controlled immigration, it will be uncontrolled, you know, because we'll be collapsing. Europe will be collapsing. I think that's what they want to do. Um, I mean, it won't happen, hopefully, it won't happen, but then again they said, like, Al-Qaeda was no threat, and that wasn't going to happen. But um, I think we we need to be together in Europe and be open to people, but, there, you know, you've got to put down limits as well. Okay? And so if you thought this was a good talk, and I clarify my position a bit better, you can leave comments. And I don't mind if you disagree with me or not. Okay, thank you, and peace.